Welcome to Lesson 3, Expressing Social Security and Medicare as a Piecewise Function. Our objectives are to write a piecewise function to represent the Social Security and Medicare tax structure and then to use these functions to solve tax problems. What I've put down here is an example of the federal income tax rate and you can see it's very complex depending upon how much you make you go into a different tax bracket. We could build um, a piecewise function to represent all of this. And we will come April, around tax time when we are actually in that unit. But this is an example of a graduated tax scale and would require piecewise functions in order to actually represent this. Let's look at the rate. You've looked this up in a previous lesson, but the secure, Social Security rate is taken out of income at 6.2%. So basically anything you make is taxed at 6.2%. And then that is only up to the first $117,000 of income that you make. So anything you make that's more than $117,000, you get no more tax. So say you made $120,000, 3,000 of that income would not be taxed at all. So what we want to do is write a piecewise function to represent that. So if you remember a function, a function has an output for every input. And what we're going to do is we're going to write a function, and we use function notation when we're doing that, and we typically use f for function notation. And since we're talking about income, I'm going to use f of i. So we have a function with our independent variable being income. So depending upon what our income is, we are going to have to pay a certain tax. All right. So if we think about what this is, we're going to take our income and we're going to multiply it by 0.062. Remember that we need to change this to a decimal, so we have to move our decimal point up two times in order to write this in its decimal equivalent. So we have 0.062 times whatever income we make, that's going to be our first function, right? But that assumes, of course, that we make $117,000 or less. So I need to write that somewhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, well, that's where my income has to be less than or equal to $117,000. So if you think about a piecewise function, this means we're going to write it in pieces. So this is the first piece, and this part here, let's underline that, this part here represents the domain. So that is the interval on which this function will be applied. So we will only use this function if our income is less than or equal to 117,000. If we have 120,000, we wouldn't use this function, we wouldn't use this equation. But we are going to need another equation, because if we do have income that's $120,000, then what's the equation for that? Well, we know that if we have income that's $120,000, we know that no matter what, let's change this back to orange, whoops. We know that no matter what, our function is going to say, and you know, we don't need to write the function notation anymore, it's just going to be a given that we're, this is all one big function. So we know we're going to pay 0 0.062 times $117,000. This is assuming we make more than $117,000. But then remember that anything over that is not taxed. So essentially, if we make over $117,000, only $117,000 is taxed. So we would only use this equation, though, if our income was greater than $117,000. So those are our two pieces. We use the first equation if we make $117,000 or less. If we make more than $117,000, we can use this equation because we know we're going to get the full tax, 6.2% on $117,000. Okay, now let's use these equations to actually solve a tax problem. So let's say, for example, that we have income of $110,000. Which one of these equations are we going to use? Well, remember that this top one says we use it if our income is less than or equal to 117. This, 110, is definitely less than 117,000. So we would use the first equation only. So we would fill in for income 
we would fill in 110,000 in place of I. So we would have 0 0.062 times 110, and that will tell us our tax. According to our calculator calculations, our tax would be 6,820. And we'll go ahead and save this. So that's our tax if we have an income of $110,000. We would pay almost $7,000 to Social Security. But it's not a bad thing because then eventually when you get in your 60s, you will receive an income every year, every month, actually they pay it to you monthly for the rest of your life, assuming that Social Security is still around. Okay, let's look at the second scenario. Now we have an income of 120000 So if we look at our two equations, our income is greater than 117000 so we have to use the bottom one. So for the second one, our function, when our income is 120000 is going to be equal to 0 0.062 times 117,000. There's no variable here because we know we only get taxed up to the first 117,000. So if we look on our calculator, we have our tax rate times 117,000. That might be too many zeros there. 7,254. And that would be our tax on $117,000 of income. Now, if you think about this, it doesn't matter how much you make over $117,000. This is the maximum tax you'll have to pay in a year. All right, and that's one example of piecewise functions. Let's go ahead and look at Medicare. So for Medicare, you found the rate to be 1.45% up to the first $200,000 of income. After that, you have to pay 0.9% on all income over $200,000. So the tax doesn't go away, it just becomes a lower tax. So let's go ahead and think about how we might write these functions. If you want to pause the video and give it a try on your own, that would be great, and then come back and we'll do it together. Okay, let's see how you did. So we have our function, and we're looking at income again. So in this situation, our first equation is very similar to Social Security. We have to pay 1.45% on all income, and we're just going to take it in pieces up to the first 200000 So we're going to write an equation for that. So we have, again, change it to its decimal form, 0 0.0145 times income, whatever that income is. Now remember that this piece, this equation here, only works up to the first $200,000. So we need to write that in the domain. So we need to say that only works if our income is less than or equal to $200,000. Beyond that, we need a different equation. So let's look at our second equation. So now we pay 0.9% on all income over $200,000. Well, we still have to pay the 1.45% on the first 200000 so we can still write that. So we have 0 0.0145, and this time we're going to be over 200000 so we know we're going to have at least $200,000 of income, so we'll go ahead and write that. But now we have to add to that an additional tax. Move our domain over. So the additional tax is... 0.9, which if we move the decimal place twice, we get 0 0.009 on all income over 200,000. So think about how we can write that as an expression. Well, we have our income, whatever we make, and you can even put a number in your head to help you say you made 250,000. You would take 250,000 minus 200,000 in order to figure out what's taxed at that 0.9%. So we're going to take our income, which we're saying maybe is 250,000, minus 200,000, and that'll get us the income that's taxed at 0 0.009 or 0.9%. So the only thing we have left to do then is to define our domain. 
to define when this happens. So, we know that this is going to happen when our income is greater than 200,000. So these domain pieces over here help to guide us to tell us which equation to use because we use very different calculations depending upon how much income we have. Let's then finish this off by using those Medicare equations. Let's use them. So in this case, we have income of $150,000. Which equation are we going to use? So this is my guide, right? Well, I'm going to use this top one because my income is less than or equal to $200,000. So, I would say that my income of 150000 is going to have a tax of 0 0.0145 times 150000 And I can calculate the exact amount, 0 0.04, whoops, 0 0.01. Four five times one hundred fifty thousand gives me two thousand one hundred and seventy five dollars. So my Medicare portion would be two thousand one hundred and seventy five dollars. And remember that every employee, no one is exempt, has to pay Medicare and has to pay Social Security on their income. Now let's look at our second scenario. Now we have an income of two hundred fifteen thousand. So our income in this case. 215,000. Which equation are we going to use? Well, we're going to use the second one because our income is greater than 200,000. So we're going to take 0 0.0145 and multiply that by the first $200,000 of income. Plus, we're going to take this little extra rate of 0.9% and we're going to multiply it by anything over 200,000. So that would be 215,000 minus 200,000. That will get us that number. So simplifying this, let's go ahead and multiply first. And you get 2,900 for this first part, plus the additional tax. Well, 215 minus 200 is 15,000 times this tiny little tax, 0 0.009, that's an extra $135. So not too bad, actually, not too much. But if you get enough people that have that, it can add up to the economy. So let's add that tax to 2,900, and this person would be taxed at $3,035. Okay, and now you see how to organize graduated taxes to be piecewise functions. And remember that there are other things that are graduated or that change at different thresholds. And you're going to explore that in the next lesson when you look at postal rates or when you look, for example, at commissions. Remember that you don't always get paid the same percentage. It may not be a flat rate. It may grow depending upon your increase in sales. All right, and that concludes our lesson for today.